Hello, in my last video, we made the stand that this drill press is sitting on. Now, it's still not hooked up to power, so we need to keep going on the drill press project here. Now, this presents an opportunity to talk about the different types of power used in a shop because the motor that's in this old drill press is a three-phase motor, and I'm in my residential garage here. All I have available to me is single phase, so where are we going to come up with three-phase? Well, there's a couple different ways to do it, so let's crack open the three-phase, single-phase topic and get into this. <laughs> okay, what's the big deal with three-phase? It, it's really good for running industrial motors, okay? So big motors and big drill presses in lathes, three-phase is the shit. Now, because the powers that be have decided that I don't need three-phase in my garage. I need to make some for myself. And there's a couple different ways to do that. Now for this drill press, I'm gonna be using what's called a variable frequency drive or VFD. The reason I wanna do that, so, so basically this is gonna take single phase power and it's gonna convert it into three-phase power, but it's gonna give me an additional functionality that, that's important to me. And it's gonna let me change the frequency that the electricity is resonating at. The motor being a three-phase motor, is gonna spin at a given RPM because of the frequency of the electricity. So if this little knob on this little unit allows me to change the frequency of the electricity, and that's gonna allow me to uh, adjust the speed that the drill press is spinning without changing, oh, oh, this cover stuff, without changing the belt on the step pulleys. Okay, so that's a real slick, you know, computer techie way to do it, right? We got a little computer box. We're just gonna give it single phase and it's gonna spit out three phase and the world is good, right? Well. There's another way to do it, and I personally like this way because it's it's kind of badass. It's kind of the cowboy method. All right, now before I show you this, I just want to add this quick little disclaimer. Now, I'm not an electrician, okay? I never have been. However, my dad is a master electrician. He kind of helped me set the system up, so it's at least somewhat legit. And his dad before him was a master electrician. So most of what I know is just kind of through osmosis. Doesn't mean that this is the right way to do things or the best way to do things. It's just a way to do things, okay? So just. Just enjoy. All right, now let's get down and dirty here. This is big blue, all right? This is a five horsepower, three phase motor hooked up to single phase, sitting on a piece of OSB and some cinder blocks. Now, if we just turn the power on, this motor won't actually start because it's only running on two of the three legs that it requires to run. So to get this to work, we're gonna have to pull start it with a string. My apologies for the poor lighting here, but what I'm doing now is I'm just wrapping a string around the shaft of this motor and like I said before I have to give this motor a pull start before I turn the power on in order for it to actually spin otherwise it's, it's just not gonna it's not gonna start spinning it's just gonna kind of try and wiggle back and forth and make a nasty noise and then eventually burn itself up and we don't want that so we're gonna give this thing a pull start and then we're gonna turn the power on at the break all right all right, so Big Blue here is just spinning away for us, and that's great because he's making three-phase power. So I can just come over to my lathe now, and my lathe works. All right, now I'm gonna show you why this isn't exactly a fantastic idea. All right, as you can hear, the motor's still running, so let's measure the voltage between L1 and L2. And there we are at 241, 242, perfect. All right, now let's measure the voltage between L1 and L3. 213 so L3 and we can do the same thing there and actually that's not even either 220 okay so line 3 is a little bit low and the reason for that is we'll flip that off so we can get some peace and quiet here all right so this motor is made to run on three power wires three phase power but we're only giving it two power wires so what's the deal you give it a tug you give it power Where's the three phase coming from? Well, there's a permanent magnet inside that motor and it is spinning by the third coil of wire that is inside the motor that isn't being energized from electricity because we don't have it connected to electricity. So it's inducing current in that third coil of wire which is then feeding the third leg to my lathe over here. And that's what's allowing my lathe to run. So my lathe is running on the single phase, on two thirds of its motor, and then it's kind of robbing this motor that's over here of the third phase, and it's, and it's kind of running okay on that. But as we saw, the voltage across all three legs isn't exactly even because this motor is trying to work kind of hard to make that third leg of power. So not ideal, but 
in an old piece of machinery with an old motor and no electronics or anything like that, it works. All right, enough about that. Uh, we gotta hook this thing up, right? So I wanna do this the Mr. Slick computer guy way because I wanna vary the frequency because I wanna vary the speed of the spindle without changing the belt on the step pulleys. So I need a single phase outlet right here. I need a 240 volt single phase outlet. Now, fortunately I have 240 volt single phase right here. So yeah, this shouldn't be too hard. Okay, here we go. This wiring right here, this is temporary. My dad and I are gonna finish this up all pretty. Okay, don't worry about that. But I got the disconnect, which used to be right here. I've got it on the wall now, so now I can, I can hit this. Okay, VFD is on. All right, so you can see that it's set to 22 hertz. That's the hertz reading. If I turn this knob up, we can get it to go all the way up to 60. So now we'll hit this run button. <laughs> oh. All right, so there it is spinning at 60 hertz. Now let's dial this down. Ten hertz. Oh, that's pretty cool. So what's the big deal? Why do we want all this variable speed nonsense? Well, I got this piece of material and I want an eighth inch hole in it. Oh, you know what? No, actually that was a pilot hole for a three eighths hole. Well, now that this drill bit is bigger, that, that speed is just cooking. I want it a little slower than that. That's a much better speed for this hole. There we go. So that is why I wanted a VFD on the drill press because I wanted that on the fly speed control with the knob. So I can vary the frequency, which means I can vary the speed, which means I can go from an eighth inch bit to a three eighths inch bit. No problem, slow it down, you, you get it. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Hit like, hit subscribe, tune in for the next one. I'm just gonna keep Keep putting out videos like this. Hope you like them, because they're gonna keep on coming.